Hi there YouTubers, welcome to Abiogenesis, Evolution and the Infinity Monkey Theorem. In this video I will discuss the analogy used to bring up the concept of infinity, the infinity monkeys at infinity typewriters, and how it is relevant and irrelevant to the concept of both evolutionary biology and abiogenesis, and their different yet interrelatable natural selection methods. First, I should bring up the story as to why I decided to make this video. Not long ago, I, and a user I have never been acquainted with, known as Crispy Kangaroo, attempted to explain this analogy to a character known as Moonlight Bateman, and he had it completely going over his head. In fact, the conversation was very much similar to this. I remember talking to you about the nature of infinity once, and uh there's a lovely model that shows the nature of infinity where they say um, an infinite amount of chimps, an infinite amount of typewriters will um, type the complete works of Shakespeare. And you couldn't grasp that. You couldn't wouldn't grasp. happen. Wouldn't happen. I think you know it wouldn't happen, but you say it would to annoy me. No, because it works by definition, because it's the nature of infinity. It doesn't matter. If the, it, infinite means if they did everything at random, just random, 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 forever, Forever and ever and ever, eventually they type everything. They it, 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 it wouldn't. It wouldn't. They check. What do you mean? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. There'd always be mistakes. There would be mistakes. They'd do the complete works of Shakespeare an infinite amount of times. Yeah, but do you mean they'd actually do it from start to finish, yeah. or a chapter? They might get a chapter done. And you go right. Well done. It's but shut up out. They know. No. No. There's no. There's no feedback to it. It's just that everything being done, they will eventually do everything every time. They're, they're, they get it wrong an infinite amount of times. They get every letter wrong an infinite amount of times. It's the same monkey. It doesn't matter whether it's an infinite amount of monkeys. Well, how does the other one know what the first one did? It do doesn't matter. They've chosen monkeys, not because they're thinking about it, to take thought out of it. They want it to be random. Yeah, but when they hand over... When Who they hands over? over? What monkey. do you mean they shift? The monkey. The monkey's done, done whatever shift pattern they're on. <laughs> they're not on a shift pattern. Inf infinity. You work from now, forever. That's one not, monkey. What difference does it make if it's one monkey for an infinite amount of time, or an infinite amount of monkeys? Because you can believe it if it was, if it was one monkey doing it. It do, doesn't matter. They've chosen monkeys, not because they're thinking about it, to take thought out of it. They want it to be random. Yeah, but when they hand over... When Who they hands over? over? What the do monkey. you mean they shift? The monkey. The monkey's done, done I, whatever shift pattern they're on. They're not on a shift pattern. Infin infinity. You work from now, forever. That's one monkey. What difference does it make if it's one monkey for an infinite amount of time, or an infinite amount of monkeys? Because you can believe it if it was, if it was one monkey doing it. Because he's going to get better, isn't he, as time goes on. It's nothing to do with their consciousness. It's nothing to do with them thinking about it. What do you mean he'd get better? He'd get better if he's doing it on his own. If it's just a one monkey, he knows what he's done. It's nothing to do with knowing what you've done. It's just a random process to show the nature of infinity. With no errors. It, it may not it... happen. It was uncanny, except Moonlight Bateman had seemingly less arguments, such as, No, nope, never will happen. No, it won't. Try and tell me what you come up with, but beware, monkeys are known to bite and throw poop. Lol. You have no concept of reality, do you? Monkeys on typewriters? Really? Is that the best you can do? Again, the math says it won't happen. All those zeros add up to only one thing. Impossibility. It is impossible for a room full of monkeys to top Hamlet. Please prove me wrong by, <laughs> by having them actually do it. <laughs> I think that's enough. You get the idea. The nature of infinity is lost on the uneducated. Eventually, I gave up on trying to explain this to him, which he took as a victory, which uh, filled me with a bit of sorrow as I tried quite hard to educate him and did not take it much as a debate, as he didn't have a counter-argument. So anyway, Moonlight Bateman, this is for you. The complete works of Shakespeare represents an improbably complex, yet achievable sequence to be met at random. The typewriter chimp represents a random generator of the potential units for this sequence. The number of chimps can be one, a room full, or an infinity. It doesn't matter. 
However, the amount of time to pass in the model must be undetermined and therefore infinite. Now, at random, an infinite amount of sequences of units, in this case the alphanumeric system, will all be achieved and each of them can be said to be Shakespeare with a set number of mistakes. Eventually, a random sequence will be met that is identical to the complete works of Shakespeare. This is because the nature of infinity means it has no boundaries as to what can be produced, no matter how low the probability. Now the next thing to discuss is how relevant the infinity generation model is to scientific concepts of what are immediately assumed to be improbabilities, such as abiogenesis and biological evolution. The appropriateness and inappropriateness of this model in comparison to the above scientific facts is well documented. The biggest gap in the comparison is that the infinity model has a hypothetically unlimited possibility of unit sequencing as well as is entirely reliant on probabilities met at random. If you were to apply correction and refining processes into the mechanism such as natural selection, this model will be much more applicable to the scientific process and it will also remove the requirement of infinity and the illusion of impossibility. Once you've absorbed that all in, I'll move on to the refined model of typing chimps. Step one in refining the model is to include natural selection and retainment of beneficial, or in the case of the typewriter sense, correct randomly met units. If you wanted to type the word impossible using only the 26 letters of the alphabet generated at random, it would have too high an improbability to be met in a reasonable amount of time. However, if a letter was generated correctly in the right slot and remained there for the rest of the shuffling period, the desired result will be met incredibly briefly. The same model of that one word applies for the complete sequence of units featured in the complete works of Shakespeare. Already, the probability of a desired sequence has been marginalised by introducing one vital scientific factor. A second factor is that of chemical attraction and chemical presence laws. Say the random element generating the letters is unable to place a preset number of units together. For instance, if natural selection locked in a Y, the random generator will not place on either side of it a letter that does not precede or supersede Y in any English word. With these two precepts and the eradication of units that will never be used from the random generation process, such as numeric symbols, the works of Shakespeare will be generated without fail in a calculatively small amount of time. By a similar process, abiogenesis can take place, perhaps even under simpler circumstances, as abiotic catalysts are well documented. Well, I hope that has begun to give you a better understanding of the principle we were trying to explain to you, Moonlight Bateman, and other creationists who believe abiogenesis and evolution is a random process. For a better understanding, you'll need to read into improbability mechanics, and so I hope you aim to educate yourself because a man your age should know more about the world we live in. Well, thanks for watching. Rather than a random closing music clip, I have what will seem at first to be quite a random question. Here it is. Would you say my appearance is comparable with Andy Dick? Moonlight Bateman thinks I do with a passion, and flattered though I am that I look like a famous comedian, I just don't see it myself, so, um, well, maybe it's just me. See you later.